Welcome back to another episode of the Canadian Watch Monkey and today I'm going to be reviewing my Damasco DS30. Uh, this one is a special one. Uh, I'll explain to you why shortly but uh, let's open this up and see what's inside here. So you can see it's a very nice box, very solid. Uh, it's not the cheap old box that's for sure and it says uh, Damasco up top here and here it comes on a cushion. Uh, the watch originally came with this nice leather strap that's also branded as Damasco, the buckle there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyway, uh, yeah. So as you can see, uh, uh, this is a little bit special and I'll explain to you why. And here we go. Just let me toss that off to the side there, guys. And uh, so the first thing you can notice if you know anything about these watches are the hands. These hands are different than pretty much any other Damasco that you're going to see. And the reason for that is that these are using the Zin or Sin, however you want to pronounce it, hands. Uh, the Damasco hands, the loom goes right to the ends. On the Sin hands, they stop where these are stopping. I really like this look. It kind of gives the illusion that the hands are kind of floating. Uh, rather than attached to the center pinion there. So it, it definitely gives it a very nice uh, appearance, in my opinion, anyways. Now, I contacted uh, the Damasco uh, store that uh, this watch was purchased at, and, uh, the, and here's the booklet that it came with. And you can see here, it was purchased uh, from Watchmen in uh, the States there, in Blissfield. And I talked to them and I said, hey, you know what, did you guys produce these? And he goes, no, we didn't. But uh, on request, they would modify uh, a handful of these watches with this in hand. So this is one of the modified ones. And that's pretty cool. So someone actually spent the extra time to have these uh, hands put on this watch. Now, the other thing that you can see here is this has got the uh, bracelet that not many people bought because it was very expensive. The bracelet, believe it or not, was almost the same price as the watch, slightly less. These watches are a little over a thousand US and the bracelets I think were going for around 800, 700 US. And you think, wow, that's kind of crazy. But until you actually see and feel and handle the quality of the bracelet, it's hard to um, explain and justify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom up closely here for you guys so you can actually see what makes this bracelet so special. You can see here they're using Torx head screws to hold the bracelet in, pay, in place. So you got to take these apart and then you can adjust the bracelet. And you can see the precision that it's made in. Unbelievable. Like seriously, I've had a lot of bracelets and... Uh, this is second to none. So you've got a special tool that comes with the watch uh, right here. Thought I'd misplaced that for a sec. And that's branded Damasco. And you can see the head there. So that's the Torx screw that you place in here. And then you unscrew it. Uh, and then you can pull these links apart and adjust the bracelet. So that's one of the things that make it special. Of course, the other thing is the material that it's made out of and they're using that submarine or ice hardened steel or whatever you want to call it. At first I thought, ah, you know, it's kind of bullshitty, but it's not, it's, it's, this stuff is tough. Like this watch is four or five years old. There's not a mark on it. You can see even the clasp, there's no marks on it. It's incredible. And uh, you'll see a lot of watches, the first time you wear it, the clasp gets all damaged. So let's take a little bit closer look at the, the bracelet here. You can see it's uh, branded as Damasco. And you see these holes here. That's to allow these uh, ceramic ball bearings to sit in there. So when you uh, put the watch on, you're going to get a very audible click. Listen. And the same thing with the other side, of course. That's going to go into those two holes right there. And you get a very satisfying click. So that's not going to go anywhere. That's on real good. And uh, also the reason for going to ceramic like that is one for the precision and secondly for longevity. It's going to last a long time, that bracelet. So if you're looking for something very unique and special, 
uh, that this Damasco DS30 is pretty phenomenal. And the bracelet is actually, I could say, incredible. Um, what are some other features that make the Damasco uh, very um, special? Is that the crown action is one of the best that you'll ever experience. So what I'll do is I'll unscrew it and you're going to see it's actually going to pop out. Um, there you go. So it's very springy. So it pops out and uh, it, it puts it into the first position where you can hand wind the watch if you want. It is an automatic. Okay. If you move it to the second position, that's going to allow you to change the date. And it's, I can't even tell you how smooth that is. It's like silk. And then, of course, you want to change the time. By the way, I shouldn't be really changing that date while it's in this position. Uh, there you go. You could harm the mechanics of the watch, but luckily this time I got away with it. But just the way the hands move is so nice and smooth. And uh, the other thing that you should know too with the Masco, they have uh, something inside the watch that kind of dehumidifies the watch. I don't know exactly what it is, but they got something in there. But if you take just a close look at the dial, it's so clean. I love the way they do the... Uh, the, the date uh, window there and the wheel all black so it almost disappears you hardly notice it but really you guys if you're looking for a really nice kind of casual everyday watch that can take serious abuse uh, this would be a great choice and uh, I would call this a modern Flieger style watch not a true Flieger I'll show you some true Fliegers in a moment and you can see it's got some markings on there as well. You guys can read. So I'll just let you have a moment there to read that. So you can see made in Germany and uh, tells you it's got 20 bars water resistance, which is about 200 meters. So going in the water and swimming in that, not a problem at all for this watch. But you can see this watch, like I said, is, is not new and uh, still looks as new. So I can't say enough good things about the case material on this like i've had the sin uh watch as well i uh, forget which model it was but anyway uh this is a step above sin i can tell you that right now i know sin has uh i guess a better movement inside they're uh, both using uh either the eta or the salita movements but I believe the, actually, I know the SIN is using a slightly higher grade. So if that's important to you, then you may want to stay with the uh, SIN. But as far as aesthetics go, I think this is just as good looking, maybe even better than the SIN. Uh, but the build quality of this is higher than the SIN. Absolutely. I can tell you that for sure. Um, this is a very, very well-constructed watch that's built to last. Of course, it's sapphire glass as well. And uh, just to show you what a more true Flieger looks like, of course, these should be bigger if it was a true, true Flieger. But here, this is a Stoa. Uh, that's a German company as well. Both, these are both German, by the way. You see at the bottom there, it says made in Germany. And uh, this one will say it probably on the back. But uh, the, this here is a, just a fantastic watch. This is the Flieger, um, Stoa Flieger 40 Classic. And this watch blows me away too. This is a, another very nice watch. Um, these usually come with a satin finish or brushed. This came a little bit damaged to me, so I polished it to a high polish. And I was going to reintroduce the brushing, but you know what? I like the polished look so much, I, I'm going to keep it like this. I'll be doing a review on this as well. Very similar to IWC. By the way, they call this the A-type dial. And this is a B-dial. And this is a, another very respected uh, military watch by, uh, uh, not Sto, by Laco. You can see this is completely different. If you guys are going to get a Laco, uh, I would only, in my, my taste and opinions, is get the classic. And this is the classic style. They come in all kinds of different configurations. But what gives it away is the case style with these straight lugs that just kind of look like they're welded onto the side of the case. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Canadian Watch Monkey. If you got any questions or anything, always willing to help you guys out. Or if you want to give me some tips, I'm always willing to listen. Take care and have a great day.